importance of plant foods, whole grains, fruits, and vegetables is rampant in our modern culture, but that is far from what is needed for true optimal health. It is blatant that vegan health beliefs fall very in line with what average people are told and accustomed to. This is no different with even top athletes as it seems. Steven Wonderboy Thompson is one of the top ranked UFC fighters at the moment and how he eats shows how far genetics and dedication to training can get you because it is definitely not his diet. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I look tired because it's 7.45 a.m. And I'm not a morning person. There you go. Not a morning person. But I do get up to eat my first meal. And what I have here, I've got two hard boiled eggs, two whole grain wheat toast with, I like to put peanut butter on it. You can switch it up and maybe do like a guacamole spread. But since my weight is kind of on point right now, I'm just putting some peanut butter on it. It's delicious. And an orange. And I've also a glass of skim milk, y'all. Okay. So, I got the two eggs, which is going to be a good source of protein. A delish. The fruit is going to be a good source of natural sugars. And the toast is going to be good for, you know, good energy. It's going to help kick my day off. I'm going to be eating up to 2,400 calories today. And everything that I eat today is gonna to be delicious. It's nothing nasty, nothing really bland. Let's scrub. I like to start with the oranges. This really is as cookie cutter and as appeal to authority as it gets. He's pretty much parroting things that he's probably heard his whole life. Whole grain, whole wheat toast. First of all, grains are actually bad for you, especially the wheat bread that you normally buy in the supermarket. It has dozens of ingredients. It's not fermented naturally. It's not made in a high quality fashion, you know, like our ancestors used to make sourdough breads. Plus, it doesn't have any significant amount of vitamins. The minerals aren't available. Same as the elements, no real essential fatty acids in bread. So why is it so good for you? Fiber has never shown any actual mechanistic benefit from a metabolic standpoint. Peanut butter is probably one of the unhealthiest foods disguised as a health food. It is high omega-6, throws off your omega-3 to omega-6 balance. Omega-6 fats are very prone to oxidation, can be rancid, plus peanut butter doesn't have vitamins, nutrients, especially the water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins, minerals, elements, fatty acids in any real capacity as it is from a plant source and only animal foods have the nutrients that our bodies really need. He says that the oranges have natural sugars, which is kind of funny considering that these types of oranges we consume now are not reminiscent of what they used to have in nature. And if someone's going to say, oh, well, you get vitamin C from fruit, sugar and carbohydrate consumption increases your need for vitamin C so by consuming fruit for vitamin C, it's actually a net negative unless it's a wild fruit uh, like the kakadu plum, the acerola cherry, the camu camu fruit, which are actually very high in vitamin C, but are like sour, uh, rare, wild fruits. And he had to top it off with the skim milk, the pasteurized and homogenized low quality crap in the supermarket that is devoid of nutrients because the cows are fed a diet of essentially crap like he's eating. Imagine if these athletes were actually eating raw milk and high quality foods. All right guys, it's 9.30. I had my first meal at 7.45 this morning. I'm eating again at 9.30. And I'm eating six meals a day. Not every meal is really big. So this is considered a meal. So an apple is good for you. It's good fiber. I'm eating kind of frequently. So the frequency of your eating will will up your metabolism, which will make you get leaner. And it will also give you energy for training. And it tastes delicious and it's sweet so meal number two metabolism is such a general term that if you're going to say something ups your metabolism it can apply to staring at the wall 
You know, I could walk two feet and it ups my metabolism. What do you mean by metabolism? Do you mean you're eating the apple and it's causing your blood sugar to be more consistent throughout the day? Do you mean you're increasing your food intake so your body adjusts to a higher caloric expenditure? If someone doesn't explain what they mean by boost their metabolism, they don't really know what they're talking about. Okay, so like I said before, my schedule is pretty crazy, so this is a perfect uh, diet for those of you guys that are on the go. And what I've made for my third meal of the day, something very simple, it is a, and I love it, it's my favorite, a good old fashioned ban banana and peanut butter sandwich on a whole grain, folks. It's gotta be whole grain. Also has some clusters of, of grapes in there as well. Now the carbohydrates and stuff that, that I'm that I'm eating is gonna help when I'm training throughout the day because I'm I, I go nonstop during the day. Teaching classes is basically like a workout for four hours straight. And then I train on top of that. So I'm not bulking guys. I'm not, get, I'm not, my goal is not to get bigger. The goal is to keep my weight down so that way it makes my cut to 170 a little bit easier. At the same time, it's satisfying. It's nothing really bland. I'm not eating bland chicken all the time. Even the chicken that I'm having today tastes phenomenal. Nothing like eating a good old fashioned peanut butter and banana. Same. This meal is really similar to the first meal. He's not having the hard boiled eggs. You know, but he has the wheat bread, the peanut butter, sugar from fruit. And he emphasizes whole grain. Whole grain is not any healthier than refined white carbohydrates. Granted, nothing extra is added. And most whole grain breads are actually white breads, refined white breads, but they just add some extra of the seed or the hull to it to disguise it as wheat bread. So it's very likely that he's not even eating genuine wheat bread. And even if he was, that only marginal difference is the blood sugar fluctuation, but that only applies if he was eating the bread on its own. He's consuming it with fat, the peanut butter. So he, he really doesn't have any basis for why whole grain would be better to consume. He says he's trying to maintain a low body weight. And yeah, I mean, starving yourself of animal nutrition and only eating plant slave foods is a great way to hamper your performance and keep your body weight down. All right, guys, as you can tell, I'm dressed. I'm getting ready to go right from karate camp, right into teaching classes. So what I do here is kind of a my fourth meal of the day slash snack, I guess you could say. I'll do a handful of blueberries and a handful of blackberries. These things are rich in anti antioxidants and it's gonna give me that good boost of energy when I get out there and teach classes. Going from one thing right into the next, I need that energy. So just more sugar to get him through the day and the antioxidant content in fruits is so insignificant if you actually understand glutathione. Glutathione is the chief antioxidant in the body, and it primarily requires B vitamins as well as amino acids to be made. So if you're going to talk about antioxidant capacity of foods and not mention animal foods, you're a little bit off track. All right, guys, meal number five. I found a break right in between classes to come and do this because my, my schedule is always crazy, as you know. So what I have here, the fifth meal of the day, I have a six ounces of chicken in here, which is great for protein. You're breaking down the muscles to build them back up. And I got a little salad here with a, with a, a light vinaigrette. I like to put some feta cheese in there as well. It kind of spices it up a little bit. Now the chicken that I do, it's not a plain chicken. I like to have my stuff flavorful. So what I do is I'll get like six chicken breasts, I'll put it in the crock pot for like um, eight hours on low. And I'll actually take a knife and a fork and I'll cut the, the six chicken breasts up, right? Into little small pieces. And then I'll get, this is what I do. I'll get zesty Italian dressing and I'll pour a whole thing of zesty Italian dressing in there and mix it all up. And that's what I use throughout the week for my chicken. So it's just something simple, boys and girls. It is easy, it's simple, it works for me. I'll be training tonight also. Like I said, I like this because it keeps, it keeps everything fresh. The stuff that I'm eating is good. It keeps my energy up, you know what I'm saying? So second to last meal right here. At least there's some animal protein in this meal. Although it's only six ounces of conventional chicken, which is very low quality, it's lean, and we know that fat is where nutrients are contained. You need fat to have fat-soluble vitamins in the flesh of an animal. You put some feta cheese in there, so hopefully it's full-fat feta cheese. Maybe that small amount of cheese every day is giving him some nutrients that his body needs. He douses it in zesty Italian dressing. 
uh, we know which might have some bad ingredients here and there but the main problem with these diets isn't necessarily that the foods they're consuming are so bad for them it's just a lack of vitamins minerals elements and essential fatty acids from animal foods here comes my protein shake what's up baby last meal of the day right here baby Check that out. Check check this out. G Fuel. Haha, <laughs> it's not G Fuel, but it's their bottle. Uh, this is my sixth meal. This protein shake is it. So this is considered a meal. This, this is good to rebuild the muscles that I broke down today during strength and conditioning thanks to this guy. What's up, baby? I don't really know what to say if your major source of protein is from protein powder at some point in the day. You know, we've seen this with vegans uh, trying to shill uh, their supplements, whatever they're trying to sell their viewers. And it's really unfortunate everyone is so misguided on nutrition even these top level athletes you know throughout this day as we've said fat soluble vitamins water soluble vitamins a b c d e k2 omega fatty acids all of these things are crucial to human health and development and these people aren't obtaining them in even small amounts if you literally had a couple bites of a steak or a couple bites of wild caught seafood you would be getting more nutrients than he's getting in a week, in a day. If you don't have high quality animal foods present in your diet, you're literally not giving your body the bodybuilding sustenance it needs in any capacity. So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, Wonder Boy, if you are in need of a nutritionist, uh, don't be inclined to hire me just to beat me up. Uh, I'm in this to try to help people and really give them an understanding of the diet. Uh, I do hope he finds guidance in the future and that his training camp diet is the complete opposite of this although you know it's probably not if you could please like the video subscribe hit that bell icon and share the video if you can if you guys would like to support me further definitely check out frankie's free range meat.com uh, we have wagyu beef on sale we have fatty beef on sale everything 100 percent grass-fed and grass finish prime graded grass-fed steaks go check it out guys frankie's free range meat.com thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day